Hey, Bio30s. Today we're going to be discussing one of the two main forms of cellular division, mitosis. And the whole point behind mitosis is you're going to get one parent cell that is going to divide into two daughter cells that are both identical to one another and are identical to the original parent cell. Uh, this form of division is the more common of the two forms of cell division in, in humans because pretty much all of our body cells do it. Unless you're a cell that's producing a gamete, then it would be using meiosis not mitosis, but uh, mitosis can be used uh, for a lot of other things. It can be used for, uh, for growth, uh, for maintenance, for repair of an organism, uh, and it can also be used as a form of asexual reproduction by a lot of different organisms uh, out there. Um, so let's break down mitosis into its, its five parts. We discussed this last uh, video with the cell cycle that uh, mitosis, which is part of that M phase of the cell uh, cycle, um, it's broken into four stages and then the actual division itself. So you've got PMAT, which was the acronym that I told you to remember, P-M-A-T, which stands for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then the actual division of the cell is called cytokinesis. So up on the board here, I've got the first two phases of, uh, of mitosis ready to go. I uh, just want to kind of tell you about the color coding here, what's going on. Uh, your cell membranes and your nuclear membranes are in black. The DNA is going to be in blue on these diagrams. And then the centrals and the spindle apparatus, which are formed by the centrals, are going to be uh, colored red. So just so you have an idea of the actual color coding of these diagrams, and that will be consistent with all four of the diagrams that you're going to be seeing here up on the board uh, in today's video. So let's talk about prophase first. Prophase is the start of cell division. So you've got to remember that uh, in the case of an organism, now this cell, by the way, uh, is going to be, this cell is an actual 2N equals 4 cell. So this is a, um, a diploid cell that has four chromosomes in it. That's what we're dealing with in, in this uh, cell division. So you can see right now that at the beginning of prophase, you're getting, your, your DNA has already been duplicated. So we're dealing with essentially eight strands of chromatin at the beginning of, um, at the beginning of prophase, and they are beginning to condense. So prophase looks very different depending on if it's either early prophase or late prophase. It looks very different, but there is a way you can kind of tell that you're looking at a, at a diagram that has prophase. So the one thing you're going to notice is as we go through prophase from start to, the, uh, from start to finish in the first phase in prophase, the nuclear membrane begins to disintegrate. So you can see here that the nuclear membrane at the very beginning of prophase is almost completely intact. That nuclear membrane is almost completely gone. It's, it's pretty much gone by the end of late prophase before we hit the next phase, which is, which is metaphase. What you'll also notice is the formation of of organelles known as centrals, which really have no purpose in the cell until the cell meets to divide. And the centrals will actually produce these, uh, these structures called spindle apparatus. They're like fibers that actually extend through the, the, um, the cytoplasm. And they'll eventually have a role to play with the separation of the genetic material. And we will get to that here when we, uh, when we get further into today's uh, 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 video. So the centrals begin to form. There are little circles there. Our red circles are the centrals, and the spindle apparatus are the, the red lines that are connected between them. And you'll see that as prophase uh, continues, the, cent the centrals actually extend out to opposite ends of the cell. So you'll have one central on opposite sides of the cell and creating a network of spindle apparatus. And you'll notice that there is one spindle apparatus or a set of spindle apparatus for every section of DNA that's in there. Now, something you might have also noticed as well is that our DNA here is much thinner than over here. We are looking at our chromatin condensing into our chromosomes, but technically they're not chromosomes because at this point they are duplicated, and that's what the little X's are for. These are our sister chromatids that I discussed with you on our uh, video about genetic materials. Um, these are representative of a duplicated chromosome that has been duplicated into two sister chromatids. The center of the X would be your centromere, which is holding those two sister chromatids together. And what you're going to see at the end of late prophase is the, the sister chromatids are beginning to align and moving toward the center of the cell. They're not quite there, but that's the, the progression. So 
Prophase, a lot's going on, so let me just recap what's going on. Nuclear membrane is beginning to disintegrate. Centrals are beginning to form and move to opposite ends of the cell, and they are extending between them with a spindle apparatus. And the genetic material is beginning to condense from chromatin into uh, sister chromatids that are attached at this point, and that is basically stage one, which is prophase. All right? Which moves on to our second phase, which is metaphase. Metaphase happens very quickly, but it is a very distinctive phase. When you look at an image of metaphase, it's very easy to spot a metaphase image. The, basically what's happening in metaphase is this. It's right at the end of prophase when all the genetic material has lined up perfectly in the middle of the cell. So it's right at the moment, just before we're going to separate the genetic material. So all the genetic material is aligned in the center of the cell, ready to go. Centrals are on opposite sides with their spindle apparatus now fully extended, and all the genetic material is beautifully lined up in the middle of the cell. We're still dealing with sister chromatids because they haven't separated yet, but that's essentially what metaphase is. That, that's metaphase, in, uh, I guess for lack of a better term. Which brings us to our next phase, which is anaphase. Anaphase actually shows, or is actually the stage at which the genetic material actually separates from one another. So what happens in anaphase is the centrals will begin to reel back their spindle apparatus toward opposite sides of the, the cell. So you can imagine these like little fishermen and they've got their fishing rods out and now they're reeling their rods back in out of the middle of the cytoplasm, the pond, and they're bringing back their catch toward where the fisherman is and that would be over here on the side of the, of the pond or whatever. But basically what's happening now is we're not dealing with chromatids anymore because as you can see, our sister chromatids that were connected with that central in the middle, or sorry, with the, with the center mirror in the middle, are now basically being ripped apart. So at this stage, because they've been separated, they're no longer connected with a center mirror, they are now considered to be chromosomes again. So these are actually chromosomes that are moving. Now remember, our cell, I mentioned at the beginning, this was a 2N equals 4 cell. We had four strands of, we had, sorry, we had eight strands of chromatin that condensed into eight sister chromatids. Those eight sister chromatids are now separated, and we've got four chromosomes moving this way, four chromosomes moving that way. That's the correct number. We've got a diploid four configuration on one side and a diploid four configuration on the other side. Presumably, these might be paired together. These might be homologous pairs. These could be homologous pairs but you're dealing with a configuration of 2n equals 4. Things are looking good on the, genetics, uh, on the genetic front. These daughter cells are going to have the exact same genetic makeup of the original parent cell before it duplicated its DNA in S phase during interphase. All right? So at this stage, you can see that our chromosomes are now separating from each other in anaphase. Uh, they're moving to opposite sides of the cell, which brings us to the final stage of, of mitosis, which is telophase. Telophase is essentially the opposite of prophase. What's going to happen in telophase is the spindle apparatus are going to disappear. The centrals will begin to disappear as well. You are going to see the reformation of the nuclear membrane, and you are going to see the decondensing of the genetic material. At this stage now, our chromosomes are now decondensing back into chromatin. So at this stage, we are now, and you're also beginning to see the cell beginning to pinch. There's a little pinching going off there, and basically that is sort of getting the cell ready to actually separate into two cells. At the moment when the two cells actually separate, that, that really short moment when the cells actually break apart, it's the end of telophase at that point, and you've entered now the very, very short, and it's like, like a split second, but it is called cytokinesis. That's when the actual cells separate. So if I had these two cells now, they were basically like this. So if I do this to my cells now, we've now just entered, like the moment they separate, the very moment when those cells break apart from one another, those cellular membranes are basically now uh, isolated from each other. That is the moment of cytokinesis when the cells have actually divided. These cells now would either enter G0 or G1, depending on what type of cell they are. 
If you want to see what uh, cellular division looks like under a microscope, take a look at the video up here. It gives you a quick little uh, microscopic view of what this looks like uh, under a microscope. And you should be familiar with that look as well, not just the diagram look, because sometimes you will see uh, uh, actual uh, photographs of cell division on exams. And that would be something you should be kind of somewhat familiar with uh, going forward. So take a look at that video. And it's a very short one. You can see what the actual cell division looks like. Um, if you want to see when cell division goes badly, obviously take a look at this, uh, this cartoon down here. I mean, take a look. And I'm very disappointed because they did spell telophase wrong. It's apparently telophase. Uh, I don't understand what telophase is. It's a, a mangling of telophase and apparently a telephone. I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. So a um, couple of things, and, and this is just more for general interest sake. Uh, we're dealing with animal cells here. Uh, when a plant cell divides, there's a couple of things that are different. Uh, plants lack centrals. They don't have centrals like, uh, like animals do. They do produce spindle fibers though, but they don't have centrals as a uh, as, a, as an organelle. You may remember that from when you discussed uh, uh, parts of a cell back in the day. Uh, and as well, uh, cells, uh, uh, plant cells can't pinch themselves off like animal cells do because they have cell walls. So they basically create a, what's called a cell plate between them, which actually then separates uh, the cells. But for lack of a better term, uh, cell division in plants and animals is very similar with just a couple of minor exceptions. And all the diagrams you're going to see, all the, the examples you're going to see on your exams uh, going forward are going to be with animal cells. But in case you wanted to know the difference between uh, animals and plants, there you go. Uh, the next couple of slides here are wonderful. Uh, they show you uh, microscopic views as well as diagramal, I guess diagram views of, um, of each of the processes that I just described. So you can take a look at those uh, to kind of uh, reaffirm kind of what I've discussed here today. A um, couple of last things before we finish up today. Um, uh, cells, uh, different cells are going to spend different amounts of time in interface. So uh, different types of cells in your body have different lifespans. So for example, skin cells last about two weeks, the ones that are on your outer skin. They're usually shed off about once every two weeks uh, and they're gone. Um, red blood cells, only four months. We discussed that back in bio 20. Uh, liver cells can live for over a year. Uh, intestinal cells, uh, on the inside, on basically where the, the microvilli are, only four to five days, and they're basically being shut off. And that's not a big surprise with all the chemicals and enzymes and acids that are basically being uh, pumped through your digestive system on a daily basis. And then other other tissues that are right beside those tissue or those cells on the very inside of your intestine. If you look at the ones that are on the outside of your intestine, they can actually live. They can actually have a lifespan of up to 16 years. Before they divide. So cells that are in very close proximity sometimes can have very radically different lifespans in your body. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, little bit of biological uh, trivia that, you know, you may not have been aware of. Um, there are, uh, as I mentioned earlier, mitosis can be used as forms of asexual reproduction. Uh, we'll discuss it later in the unit, vegetative reproduction, uh, how plants can run, uh, run suckers or, or, or uh, or uh, uh, like they can run off shoots of, of themselves. Uh, aspens do this, uh, strawberries do this. Um, th that's kind of a, a neat thing that, that uh, mitosis can do to make clones of the original plant and then actually grow them on a, on a root system below the ground. Um, there are some animals that use uh, mitosis for some really cool things. Uh, they can regenerate limbs. Uh, there are lizards that can do this. There are, starfish can do this, uh, uh, flatworms. You can slice a flatworm in half and you will actually get two flatworms that will form. And the reason why these animals can do this is because their cells are designed a little differently than most of the cells in your and my body. I mean, if I cut off my arm, it ain't growing back. I mean, unless you're watching Iron Man 3, there was that little thing in there. Or maybe you believe it read Spider-Man with, uh, with, with Lizard Man. Uh, you know, he was able to regrow his arm because he was using lizard DNA. But humans, generally speaking, aren't going to be unless you're in the movies, are not going to regrow an arm or, or a limb, right? And the reason for that is our cells are not, we have very few cells in our body that are considered to be totipotent. And what totipotent means is these cells can, there are certain cells in these organisms that can actually divide and become whatever they want. Uh, we do have cells like that in our body, and we will be discussing those in a later lesson, uh, later this semester. Uh, we have stem cells, and stem cells we can get out of our bone marrow, and they can be used to basically become anything. Now, they are very difficult to extract because they're deep in our bone marrow, but uh, there's been a lot of research going on with stem cells and how they can be used to 
basically regrow cells that maybe can't regrow, like uh, neurons. Like neurons don't, once you form your neurons, they don't, they don't do mitosis, like and we discussed that earlier this year. Um, so you can maybe regenerate cells that couldn't otherwise normally regenerate themselves using these totipotent cells, like stem cells, to actually create situations where we might be able to regrow uh, you know, people with paralysis or have had maybe nerve damage or whatever. Uh, this is, you know, some very exciting, uh, exciting research and stuff that's coming out of it. Um, and one last thing about mitosis, uh, cancer, uh, any, any discussion about cell division would not be complete unless you discuss cancer. We've discussed cancer uh, quite a bit in uh, earlier units in Bio 20. Uh, and even here in Bio 30, we discussed uh, uh, thyroid cancer in, in the last unit on the endocrine system. Uh, essentially, cancer is just uncontrollable cell division uh, in the body. And what happens is the cells that become cancerous have a very shortened interface. And they just basically, they go right from G0 into G1, immediately to S phase, and then into S2, and then they go right into, into another M phase event. And they just continually uh, reproduce and they just continually grow. And that would be the tumor. The tumor is basically the uncontrollable cell growth, growth mass that's being caused by this uncontrollable cell division that's occurring. Now, there are two types of, of uh, cancers. There is, uh, you can have, sorry, there are two types of tumors, pardon me. There are benign and malignant tumors. Benign tumors are considered to be safe. They're not usually ones that are going to metastasize. Metastasizing means that the tumor will then spread to another part of the body. That would be reserved for tumors that are considered to be malignant, uh, that actually would form in one part of the body, and then those cells can transfer to other parts of the body through the bloodstream or the lymphatic system, and then can actually populate in other parts of the body and actually form tumors elsewhere. So when you're dealing with cancer, you, the benign tumors are the ones, if you want a tumor, I don't think anybody wants a tumor, but if you were to get a tumor, the benign tumor would be the one you'd want to get, not the malignant tumor, because again, the benign tumor will not metastasize, the malignant tumor will. And that is about it uh, for mitosis. This video here, Hank has put together a fantastic video on Crash Course. Take a look at it, I keep forgetting which hand to use. Right up here, use the card uh, to take a look at that video. Fantastic review on mitosis, about 10 minutes long, but definitely be well worth your, your time to watch that. Your homework uh, after today's uh, topic is to go uh, online and find or get a copy from me in class, get the, uh, the, the handout um, cell division mitosis. The question booklet will be due uh, after, now I'll give you the date uh, when it's due probably tomorrow, uh, usually the way it is. So uh, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed our discussion on mitosis, and we'll see you next time when we discuss the big old meiosis. So uh, see you soon.